I was like, damn, I really let something that I could completely control get in the way of me growing on YouTube. And Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to my channel, Simply Key Simone. If you are new here, I want to say welcome. And if you're returning, I want to say welcome back, girl. Today, we are going to be just chit-chatting, talking it up, having a very vulnerable conversation about this beautiful beast of a platform, which is YouTube. If you clicked on this video, you either are just curious, you've been following me for a while and you kind of want to know what I have to say, or you are a YouTuber yourself and you feel like that the title resonates with you, which is why I have not been growing on YouTube and why you might not be either. Before we hop on into the video, please go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up, girl. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below. And also do not forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on your post bell notifications so that you'll be notified every time I post a new video. All of those things really, really help with these algorithms. It really, really pushes my videos out there and it's free to you. It doesn't take very long. I know, I know, I know. So go ahead and do that for me if you would. Okay, so I felt super called to make this video just because I have recently, well, maybe not super recently, but in the past couple months, I've hit 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Yay, we love that. And I have been on the platform for almost five years. In October, I wanna say, more specifically, I believe October 19th, maybe, it will be five years here on the platform. Now I know for a lot of people that's like, damn girl, that's a long time to have only 10,000 subscribers. And I'm not saying by any means that if you have been on the platform for five years or longer than that, that 10,000 or anything less than that is not good enough. I'm just saying for myself, what I would have hoped to see, it ain't that. I'm so, so grateful and so, so happy to see that my platform has grown, but I also know that there could be a lot more growth there. So I really had to sit with myself and ask like, why has it not grown? You know, of course there are things that are out of our control, such as like the algorithm and and, um, just different changes into regulations and rules and things that come out for YouTube. But there's also a lot that is in your control. So I really wanted to take the time to sit with myself and reflect like you're coming up on your five year anniversary here on YouTube. That's such a big milestone. Let's let's dive into some things. You know, if you really want to make this long term, we need to dive into what what's really going on you know what's really going on surprisingly it did not take me a long time to come up with some things that literally like off the top of my head and i have them down in my phone it's literally just five things very simple things this is not going to be one of those youtube videos where you know i'm giving you tips about analytics or giving you tips about editing and seo and all, all of the things that these YouTube gurus are teaching here on YouTube, although those things are very, very helpful. And I also love to watch videos like that myself. Um, this just ain't that. So if this is what you're looking for, I'm sorry, but this ain't that. <laughs> so you still here? Okay. You, you want to hear the real, real. You want to hear what it really is coming from someone who's on the platform, has been on the platform for years. And, um, you know, just my experience, what I really have to say in my honest, true, vulnerable feedback for myself, which I feel like can help a lot of you as well. Let's just go ahead and hop right on into the five reasons why I'm not growing on YouTube, why I have not grown as much as I wanted to on YouTube and probably why you are not either. Okay, so like I said, I have these five things. Um, I did not make like any talking points or whatnot like that. I just made the list of the five things literally in my notes so I could check them off and stay on track because if not I'm gonna talk y'all head off so the first thing has to be the thing that everybody says and this is one of the things that like I said this is not one of those traditional YouTube help videos but this one thing whatever YouTube guru says 
I have to mention it because it's, it's true and that is consistency. Over the years, I've gone up and down with my consistency. Um, I would say the times where I had literally nothing but time on my hands, it was very easy to be consistent on YouTube. But one thing that I have learned is that regardless of whatever I have going on in my life, I have got to make time for this platform. If this is something that I love, if this is something that I really want to grow, I have to figure out a schedule that works for me. So when I first started my YouTube, I was active duty in the army. So any vets out there, if you're watching, who, okay, for me. But um, I was in the army for a little over eight years. So a portion of the time of me starting my YouTube, I was still active duty. And so if you don't know what active duty is, that means that is your full-time job. If you're not deployed, this is your nine to five. So. I felt um, those last couple years in the army, they were very um, mentally draining for me and I had a lot of personal things going on and it took a toll on me being able to be consistent here on the platform. There was not really a set like rhythm, I would say, on why, how, when, what, where I was posting on YouTube and I feel like that that is the biggest downfall for so many people. Now, moving forward, once I got out of the military, I was unemployed for a year, I chose to take a year off just really decompress really reintegrate myself back into civilian life or just everyday normal life for the people that are not familiar with military terms and so I had nothing but time on my hands I was uploading twice a week give or take I would say a few weeks here and there where I made it might have did one but for the majority of I believe what year was that 2022 for the majority of 2022 I was uploading two times a week of course like I said there will be times where things would come up and I'd be like um yeah I'm not filming so uh in 2023 or the end of 2022 going into 2023 i um had got a work from home job so i was still posting but um not as consistent because ugh, lo and behold surprise to me even though you're working from home it's still very taxing um it still gets very stressful and it's hard to separate work from home when you work from home so there would be times where i was super exhausted and drained and i did not feel like filming so i didn't fast forward i got an offer for a higher paying job but it was full time at the office i accepted the job because of course who doesn't want more money and that completely drained me it completely zapped me um i was still posting here and there when i could but my creative juices were not flowing um the workplace was hostile the workplace was toxic and it just was not conducive for me to be able to produce um so i went months i think maybe not months maybe like one full month and then i would post here and there but either way i wasn't consistent so fast forward i did quit that job in the end of last year 2023 i decided to go back to school full time i was like why not finish my bachelor's i'm really my headspace is not really into work right now and i want to do something that is going to allow me the flexibility to focus on youtube so i wanted to take advantage of the benefits and go back to school and of course i'm studying a discipline that i've been working in for the last eight or nine years so it just really made sense so fast forward to now 2024 i have been in school for i want to say seven months school is going really really good sometimes i do still find it hard to find time or the energy to edit but as far as filming goes i'm i'm perfectly in it i have been posting pretty consistently this entire year of 2024 once a week maybe missing here and there but for the most part i have been consistent as much as i can i feel like regardless of where you're at in life because obviously there's been a whole bunch of up and downs with that and i know a lot of people have either kids or you know a family just different types of lifestyles i feel like consistency is one of those things that's really going to take you a long way i know that looking back over these last almost five years if i would have been more consistent um in some areas for longer that I would have definitely grown a lot more. I feel like you sometimes have to take into account that, you know, no matter what it is that you're doing in life, 
there is going to be times where you really have to buckle down and figure out what works for you in order for you to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. And I really have had to check myself on that. There's been times where there were OG creators that I've watched, literally known that they've had a nine to five, known that maybe they have kids and they've pushed through and they've created the content. Now, of course, not if you are suffering mentally or physically, of course, you don't have to push past through those. But there are times where I literally had no excuse other than I'm tired or I don't feel like it. And that is the wrong freaking answer. Because if we're going to be real with ourselves, we have way more time than we think we do. We are just not organized. We're not focused. And we're being lazy. If I'm Hey, I'm, I'm talking about myself too. So I, I ain't calling you out, girl. But yes, consistency is going to be that top number one thing on why I have not been growing like I wanted to here on YouTube. Moving right along into reason number two is comparison. Now, in today's day, we have social media. And of course, YouTube is a part of that. But YouTube has been around for forever. And a lot of things have or a lot of platforms have come after that. And I feel like that it's really just amplified the fact that people compare themselves to others because you have more access to people that you did not have before, whether it's people that you know, or whether it's people that you don't know. And so it's easy to fall into the trap of comparison because you're literally looking at people's lives every single day or what they choose to show you or what they choose to curate and, you know, post online. And so there has been times in the past where I have caught myself comparing my content or what it is that my my niche was, how much I was posting, the quality. I wasn't getting any brand deals and I see other smaller creators getting brand deals and I'm like, what is it that I'm not doing to be in the same shoes as this person? And I feel like comparison is such a slippery slope. It is truly the thief of joy and no fault to myself or no fault to anyone else out there because it's sometimes human nature. But I feel like the farther that we get into it, the deeper that we get into it, it can become very, very toxic. It can become very, very toxic to ourselves and it becomes unhealthy. And I think that if we do not, if we're not able to uh, catch ourselves when we are falling into that comparison trap, like maybe looking at it from a negative standpoint and not a positive standpoint, for example, instead of looking at somebody's content and let's say the way that they edit, right? you're not looking at it as oh my god they edit so good i don't i wonder what they use like how do they get this like this and mine doesn't look like that instead try to flip that into wow she she has some dope editing i'm gonna look up some things online to see you know how i could replicate that twist it and make it my own so you see there's like two different parts of the spectrum there of comparison like you're looking at something without tearing yourself down. And I feel like that there's been multiple times where I've caught myself in that trap and I'm like, wow, I'm literally spending all this time ridiculing and tearing down my creations and comparing it to someone when I don't know what their life looks like behind the scenes. Like, I don't know if they have an editor. I don't know if they have someone that takes all their pictures. I don't know if they, you know, are a full-time YouTuber and have the time to sit down every single day and either think of new concepts or, you know, take the time to improve their content. Like, I don't know what people's life looks like. So how dare I compare myself when I don't know what's on the other side of the fence. The grass isn't always greener. That person could be up three, four times a week, late at night, two and three o'clock in the morning, making sure that their content is top notch. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here a couple hours a day knowing that I could probably put in a little bit more work to make my content that top notch. You see what I'm saying? So that is one of those things where it's just like, baby, you just got to either get over it, shift your perspective on what you think about comparison or either just stop it altogether. See what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's definitely a big one. Reason number three. Now, I know that <laughs> I've literally said consistency comparison and the next one you're going to be like, OK, girl, is this a nursery rhyme? No, but the next one is confidence. Now, 
y'all confidence is so big and again i feel like that i feel like i've heard a lot of people say that social media affects your confidence but I honestly feel like that confidence comes from within um just a quick like little backstory not to talk y'all head off about this subject but growing up i was not the girl that had confidence 24 7. i was not the girl that really had much confidence period if if i'm being quite frankly honest i was very insecure i always looked to my left and my right i always wanted what i didn't have i always felt like i wasn't you know necessarily good enough or like to the standard of what I felt like was either super pretty or, you know, hair or clothes or, you know, all this, all the shit that really doesn't matter if we're being completely honest. I was that girl. I was that little insecure girl. So growing up and getting into YouTube, first I started watching YouTube when I was in middle school. And back when, you know, the girls, like, they weren't making any money, like, they weren't doing all these amazing edits, like, they literally just had a camera and themselves, like, the what's in my purse and the hair and makeup videos. I was watching way back then, okay? And so the fact that I did not have any confidence back then kept me from joining YouTube way sooner. I'm 30 years old. I will be 31 in October. 2024 i will be 31 years old i started watching youtube in middle school now i ain't gonna do the math all right i ain't gonna do the math you do the math but how many years is that that i could have started but didn't because i lacked confidence in myself because i lacked confidence in my capability to perform and be liked to uh, be entertaining, if you will. And so moving forward and growing up, it was still, still an uphill battle. You know what I'm saying? Like there was ups and there was downs, but I honestly feel like confidence has to come from within. I had to do a lot of work on myself. Um, there was no video that I could watch. There was no magazine that I could read. There was no blog that I could read. There was no book that I could read that could truly make me confident in myself. Of course, you know, you can get all the tips and tricks and the tools, but if you don't take the time to do the work within yourself, like I had to do, and baby, I'm telling you, this this was some grueling work, okay? This was some very deep, hard, digging through the archives of childhood type work. Yeah. Yeah, that, that stuff. I really had to take a long look like, girl, your confidence is literally what carries you through everything in life. And it doesn't even have to be YouTube. This could be through school. This could be through a job, a new promotion. This could be a hobby, a business that you're starting. Confidence. If you are not confident in what you're doing, if you're not confident in yourself, you are not going to go anywhere. You're not going to make anything happen because you're always going to be thinking about what is this person thinking about me? You're always going to be very self-critical. You're always going to feel like that you're not good enough. You're always going to feel like that maybe this is just not for me. Maybe it's for them. Maybe it's for her. She's got it all. She's she's pretty, you know, her makeup is always effortless and gorgeous. Like she always has on the right outfit. The hair is always laid. But you look at yourself and you feel like, damn, I don't have any of those things. I can't, I can't do anything. That's, that's when you take that long look in the mirror and you're like, what's, what's really going on? Because if you allow something like lack of confidence in yourself to keep you from doing the things that you want in this short life that we get, that is so dangerous. That's so dangerous. And that is, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're doing yourself a disservice because of you not believing in your own potential. And so I feel like that lack of confidence kept me from starting sooner. And in this day and age, in 2024, any social media platform, not just YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all these different places. Yeah, you see people blow up overnight, but these platforms are super oversaturated in different areas. Not saying that 
you know oversaturated in the fact that you can't find your own audience because your audience is out there they just haven't found you yet because there is so much to sift through on social media but in this day and age with there being so many different creators you know doing the same things that you want to do you really gotta knock that uh insecure stuff out the park like you you really gotta put that out your head because starting later than sooner is only going to continue to keep you behind the power curve okay so I always think to myself, like back in the day when it was, I won't necessarily say easier to grow, but if you really had your heart in it back then, you you were going to grow no matter what. Nowadays, you can have your heart truly in something and it just takes you that much longer because your audience just hasn't found you yet. Because like I said, there's so much going on on YouTube. There's so much noise going on on YouTube and you're really reliant on the algorithm to place you in front of the people that are going to want to see you the people that are going to love your content and tune in week after week after week and so i was like damn i really let something that i could completely control get in the way of me growing on youtube and yeah we're we're just not doing that anymore we're we're just not doing that anymore my tip to you and to myself is to just be confident in everything that you do no matter what no matter what you're built for whatever it is that you want to do. If you have a longing and a calling for something in your heart, there, there's something there. there. There's something there. So you have to figure out whatever it is that's going on inside you, whatever it is that might be holding you back, and uh, whatever it is that might be holding you back from that inner confidence, heal it, figure it out, dissect it, do all the things, and get that confidence up. Look in the mirror and tell yourself that you fine, you sexy, you got it all. You're you're that girl, okay? You're that girl. Because nowadays, when I'm looking in the mirror, baby, <laughs> not on no cocky, conceited things, but just that I can look at myself and see beauty in everything. So I hope the same for you too. Okay, so number four, ooh, number four, ooh, this one's a little shaky. This is something that is really big for me because this is something that I still battle with, um, something that I'm still trying to conquer, and that is vulnerability. Um, in today's day and age, in order to stand out, in order to really find your people, in order to really connect with your audience, you have got to have some level of vulnerability. Now, I'm not saying you got to get on social media and tell all your business. Mm -mm. I'm not saying all that. I would never say all that. If you know me personally, if you're watching this video and you know me personally, <laughs> I don't know. Being vulnerable is, it gives me the ick, okay? But I noticed that that is a flaw within myself, not just on YouTube, but just in life general, in general. And so I've currently been in therapy off and on for about, I would say like four years. And so that is one thing that I've learned in therapy because that was my first step at learning what vulnerability was, not being scared of it and having to face it head on was because I had to be vulnerable with my therapist. She was not going to be able to help me if I could not open up and talk to her openly about what I had going on, how I felt about it, you know, what my true feelings were and really open up and truly show my personality and who I am. And I feel like that that's the same thing on YouTube. I feel like that you can grow on YouTube without um, trauma dumping online because that's something that you never want to do. You don't want to trauma dump on your audience. That's not something I want to do. Of course, I'm going to share my personal experiences, but in a way that's not just using y'all as a diary, which is pretty, I guess, contradicting because I have a series on my channel right now called Early 30s Diaries, um, but it ain't that type. Like y'all not hearing just me crying and going through all these things, but I do talk about real life things. I talk about depression. I talk about anxiety because I suffer from both. That is something that another woman out there who is in my community or may possibly come to my community they may suffer with that but they don't see people that look like me or present themselves like me or you know can relate to people like me um 
and just assume that they don't have depression and they don't have anxiety. Why? Because we don't talk about it. Why? Because I didn't talk about it. And there's been times where I've touched on it um, on my channel. It's been super freaking cringy. Um, but I think I might link those videos in the description box. I might, if I feel comfortable. If not, then just scroll back in my videos and you can find them. Um, because sometimes it's kind of hard for me to look at them because I'm just like, ooh. But being able to be vulnerable is going to allow my community to connect with me. It's going to humanize me, even though obviously I'm a I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm just a girl. Um even though I clearly I'm I'm a human being, I'm this I'm the same as you. I'm the same as you, bro. But on the other side of the camera, sometimes people forget that. And so if you are able to approach your audience and approach your channel and be very vulnerable and open within your content to a certain degree, people are able to connect with you more. People are able to build that connection and whether it be like emotional or you're, you're just super funny or there's something in you that they find comfort in or, you know, just anything, they will never be able to see that if you're not vulnerable to a certain extent. And I realize now more than ever that that is something that has held me back. And I'm just like, girl, just be yourself, be open, be honest, be truthful. Um, definitely guard the things that need to be guarded, guard the things that are sacred to you and that you want to protect. But there's definitely a way of doing that and still being vulnerable because some of my favorite creators they're vulnerable, but there's still an underlying level of, okay, I don't know all her business. I don't know all her tea, but I know I can relate to her because she connects with me in some way or I connect with her in some way. So I feel like that that's something that is super, super important, girl. Super, super important. There's no growing without vulnerability. There's no growing without openness and authenticity. Authenticity. Authentically showing up as you being vulnerable with your journey and allowing your audience to come along with you. So with that being said, <laughs> that's something that I'm working on. That's something I'm continuously working on. And that's also something that I really want you to take and put into your back pocket, pull it out later and be like, dang, I am really rigid on YouTube. I am really kind of uh, cookie cutter, like, Where's the part of me that really stands out? You know, where's the part of me that only I have that I can possibly share or show with my audience that I have not yet. So definitely, definitely tap into that. For sure, definitely tap into that. Okay, last, but most definitely not least, because this is something that you need in anything, not just YouTube, you need this in life period. And that is purpose and vision. Now I know that that is two different things, but they had to go together. They go together real bad. They go together real, real bad. Purpose and vision. When I look over the span of my channel and I look at all the content that I've created over the years, you know, all the different niches that I've tapped into, all the different things that I've tried to do, um, some things that I've kept doing, some things that I've stopped doing, I really had to look and ask myself, what, what was the vision here? <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this because I'm laughing because B. Simone does this all the time. But what was the vision? You know what I'm saying? Like, what what was the what was the point? Like, was this something that you actually saw yourself doing? Was this something that you actually really liked? Over the years, I have tapped into a, a bunch of different things on my channel. I started off my channel talking about like spirituality, growth, and vlogs here and there. I've done try on hauls. I've done cooking videos. I've done juicing videos. Um, I had a very long stint on my channel where I was making lock videos because as y'all see, your girl is a lock queen. Okay, shout out to my other lock queens in the audience. Anybody who has ever subscribed to me for my lock videos or my lock journey, because those are the videos that are most successful here on my channel. Shout out to you, girl. Thank you for sticking around, even though I'm not deep in my lock bag anymore, because I, I just feel like, what more can I say about my locks? I don't know. They don't define me as a person and 
I just have way many different facets, but anywho, log videos, self-help and growth and development videos. And all those things are amazing. All of those things are great. But what was the vision? Like, what was the end goal? What was I trying to get to? And then I have to lean back on be like, okay, so if I don't know, or if I don't have a vision, what is my purpose? What do I feel like is my purpose? How is what I'm doing leading me to my purpose? And I feel like that those two things, they're very like big because it's hard to pinpoint them. And a lot of people can't pinpoint them. A lot of people don't really put in the effort to pinpoint them and learn those things. But I feel like that that is imperative. Like you have to do that. That's something that you have to do because if you don't have a vision and you don't have a purpose, you have absolutely no direction. You don't know what you're working towards. So if you don't know what you're working towards and you don't have any direction, that's just like hopping on the road and I live in Texas and I'm about to drive to California and my Apple Maps ain't loaded. I don't have an address to a destination to get me to California. So how am I going to get there? You know, how am I going to achieve those milestones of, you know, crossing over into the next state and getting to my destination? So we really have to kind of look at it as a roadmap for our success here on YouTube. And again, this can go for any platform, really. We really have to dive into that and be like, OK, what is what is my purpose here? What What is the vision? And although it's good to try different things, it's good to see, like, kind of get your feet wet, see where you fit in, see what really sticks, see what resonates with your audience. But make it be something that is authentic to you something that you love things that you love or maybe just you know your everyday life and what it is that makes up you as a person I really had to ask myself that that, that was a really tough question like what am I trying to do here on my channel now I know that I want to connect with like-minded women I want to build a community for women who think like me who you know we're kind of cool and funky and you know, quirky, but also cool that girl, sexy and a vibe, like a mix between very deep, but also very lighthearted, like somewhere a mix between there. Women that are in their 30s that are navigating their 30s, women that love health and wellness, women that love personal development, women that love self care, uh, women that are married or either strive to be married one day. You know, what? what is my audience? Who is my target audience? And what is my vision for reaching them? If you have a brand or content strategist and you make an appointment with them, they're, they're they're going to ask you those things. What, what's your purpose? What's your vision? Who are you trying to reach? Are you trying to get to them? How are you trying to get to them? And if there is nothing there and there's no answer, there's absolutely no way that you're going to grow on these platforms unless you just happen to be one of those lucky people that post something and it just happens to be funny, crazy or whatever, and it goes viral. OK, cool. You might grow for a little bit, but are you going to have those people there that are your ride or dies? The people that are going to come back again, time, time again, week over week. They tied into the content. And when you don't post, they like, where you at? Those are the people, the viewers, the supporters that are coming because they're they found some type of link to your purpose. They they found some type of link to your vision. Ultimately, it's going to keep growing and growing and growing over time and you will see success. I feel like that that's something that I've lacked for so, so long. And not to say that I've zeroed in on it yet. I'm still trying to define that and really zero in on what my brand is, like who Key Simone is as a brand, what Key Simone is as a brand. And I feel like with having a strong vision and purpose, that is really going to solidify that and put me in the position to grow exponentially here on this platform. <sighs> okay, okay, beautiful people. So those are my five reasons as to why I have not grown on YouTube the way I wanted to and why you're not, okay? Why, why we're not, and that is consistency, doing too, too much comparing, confidence, vulnerability, and purpose and vision. 
If any of these reasons resonate with you, drop it down in the comments. I want to know. I want to chit chat. Okay. I want to, I want to figure this thing out with you. Um, if you felt like that, just hearing my story or hearing me reflect on the things that I have either went through or are still going through here on this journey here on YouTube, then also leave that down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. I would love to chat with you. I always make sure to comment back on my videos. Um, I may not comment back immediately, girl, because like I said, full-time student, like I'm trying, I'm cybersecurity, like this shit is work and time consuming. Okay, so give me some time, but I always comment back to all my comments. I would love to chit chat with y'all. So make sure you leave that down in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you really got something from it because I feel like that this was therapeutic for me and helpful for me just even making this video. So I definitely hope that for y'all go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Do not forget to leave me a comment down below, girl. Turn on that post bell notification so that you'll be notified every time I post a new video. I, I'm a, I'm a vlogger, okay? Vlogger at heart. But I also love to do sit down videos like this and just chit chat with my girls like we on FaceTime. You know, things like that. Like I said, I have a series on my channel right now called Early 30s Diaries. I'm hoping to cross that over soon on TikTok because baby, that's another thing. That's another growth, okay? If you wanna grow, get on TikTok. So I'm over here sitting and looking at myself like, why am I not on TikTok? Why am I not posting more on TikTok? Okay. But make sure you slide on over to Instagram and TikTok so that you can keep up and see when I post at underscore Key Simone. Thank you so, so much for just sharing space with me today. Again, I hope that you got something out of this video and make sure that you check in the description box or make sure that you check at the end card after this video to see any videos that I've posted in the past and just to keep up with videos that I have coming in the future. And yes, I will just see you all in the next video. I the same pick in our rest Since you want love, but the bitch want less Can't can home cop by you ain't gotta hit money we ain't got rich like oh Yeah I be looking like that what the fuck We pull up in that